If you're watching this, that means it's my birthday. And this is a gift to you to thank you for being here, to thank you for engaging with me, subscribing, liking my videos. Maybe you came from a different platform, Facebook or Instagram, and we've been engaging there. I want to say that I appreciate you. I am only here because of you. I am here with the number of subscribers that I have right now because you chose to subscribe to my channel and I don't take it for granted. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I was reflecting on a number of things uh, today based on the fact that this is really my happy new year. And I put together a list of things that I wanted to share with you, things that I have learned over the years, things that I believe I would love to pass on to somebody who can then use it and benefit from it. So the first thing that I would love to say is that change is really good for the soul. If you've watched my videos, then you know that I moved from Nairobi and I moved to Nanyuki and it was a big change at the time. I made the decision really quickly because I tend to make such decisions quickly so that I don't start to build these castles in the air and then build expectations and start to get disappointed. So usually when I'm making a move, like I'm making a huge change, I tend to just do it and then do it like take action so even when i travel sometimes my family is always asking me like where are you going i'm like it's too early to know because i can decide in a week in three days even in two days and as long as i don't need a visa or anything like that in advance i'll get onto a plane and go wherever it is and a lot of things in life are really simple once you make the decision if you can do something for yourself today even that will be like a change for you whether it's using a different route to work whether it's using the staircase instead of the elevator whether it's talking to somebody different today on your way home or sitting down with somebody else during lunch or approaching a stranger whatever it is or taking a public speaking class like <laughs> that, that is like something that I did I did Toastmasters and I must say that even if you think you're a good speaker you go and you stand in front of these people and you're just like <gasps> you know it's it's um yeah it can't be shocking to the system but I can promise you that at the end of it all, when you make these changes, when you stretch yourself and go outside your comfort zone, that it's actually really good for your soul. And the second thing I'll share with you is that comparing yourself to others is one of the ways to make yourself really unhappy. It will make you feel small, it takes away your power, you feel defeated, and then you don't have energy to do the things that you really need to do to get you towards the goals that you may be admiring in other people. So comparing yourself is something, it's, it's a really toxic behavior and it's something that I also have to learn. It's not something that I've stopped. I haven't overcome it fully. I still compare myself to other YouTubers with bigger channels, to people on LinkedIn who seem to have careers where they're advancing really fast, to people on social media, just seeing different lifestyles and all that. But the thing that I tell myself is that when I'm comparing myself with somebody, there's something that I'm admiring about that person. And I want to like look at it and see, is it really something that I want? Is it, you know, like if I'm admiring somebody on LinkedIn, because they rose up the ranks as I've been watching them. Maybe I used to work with them or something and they've really grown up, gone up the ranks really fast. Is that something I really want? I don't want to go back into corporate and have to go up that rank. So sometimes I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I'm admiring or, you know, I'm comparing myself and where I am with where they are, but they're on a completely different journey. And a lot of the times it's not even the journey that I want, but there's something inside that just kind of like comes up and says, hey, look at this person. They are making so much money. They've grown so fast. Look at them. You, uh, you watched their YouTube channel grow from 4,000 subscribers to 40,000 subscribers in a few months. What are you doing with your channel? So it's not something that I've overcome yet, but it is something that I reflect on when that comes up and I ask myself, you know, is that what I really, really want? And what do I need to do to get me to that goal if that's something that I want? The third thing is to do things that are 
effortless for you. I know in school, when you failed in a particular subject, that's where your teacher told you to put your focus and even your parents maybe got you a tutor. It wasn't your strongest point, but it was the area that was emphasized that you needed to put effort, that you needed to improve. And then we grow up and it's like we have this thing that tells us if something is really difficult, then that's where the reward is. But I beg to differ because the gifts that you were given when you were born, the reason you are the way that you are is because that's contributing towards your purpose. It's connected to your purpose. So if you continue to do the things that are really difficult, they're not connected to your purpose. You'll struggle. You'll never be better than the person who's so good at that thing because it's connected to their purpose. So it's always best to focus on the thing that you're really good at. It's not to say that if there are things that you're not good at, you shouldn't put in a bit of effort in them. You can to have a balance, to be better, to change, to get out of your comfort zone, to do something differently. But I wouldn't focus your life purpose and your career on doing things that you feel are so difficult because you have that expectation that has been ingrained in you since you were a kid that reward is where the pain is. It may be to some degree, but it's not your purpose. It's not the direction you're supposed to be going because at the end of the day, the things that you're supposed to be doing in this lifetime, the reason why you're here in this lifetime, the contribution that you're making to this fabric of the world, the universe and consciousness is based on something that comes really easily to you, based on things that you really love, things you don't even notice when time is passing. Like you could be sitting down and doing this thing for hours on end and not even realize that it's been hours. You thought it was 15 minutes, but it's been two hours. Those are the things that you want to note down, pay attention to, and see if you can build your career and your life around that. And speaking of purpose and the reason why you're here, I want to tell you that God will always send you signs. He'll always send you signs of which direction you should be going. And this happens to me a lot. And it's been happening to me a lot more of late because I've been taking action when I see the signs when my intuition tells me you should do this thing or I set a goal and then I start to get inspired to call someone or travel somewhere or go do something it's because I take action I'm getting more and more of those signs coming up moving to Nanyuki was actually a sign as well it was a sign that manifested itself and made everything that I did since I made that decision so smooth that it, it was it, it was even weird like my friend predicted the house that I would be staying in at the time I'd only seen some really hideous houses and I ignored her telling me make sure you get a place that has a fireplace I see you in a place that has a porch make sure you get a place like she was telling me about all these things and I was thinking this chick is dreaming she has no clue and then she insisted that there's somebody I needed to call who we had met in a parking lot in Kilifi exchanged numbers not even called each other and she insists that I need to call him because he lives in Nanyuki and he can help me get a house and that's how I got my house <laughs> I made the call to the guy he sent out my information to somebody who reached out to me and then I got my house like weird I'm telling you sometimes I don't even like to share these things because people ask me they're like it, it just sounds weird but I'm sure you have your own examples of things that have happened to you that are really hard for you to explain. Things that if you tried to tell people why you took that action, you would have to explain it in a way that makes sense. But you know very well, it never made sense when you took that, that step or took that action. And that's the thing. God will always leave you signs. Or the universe, whoever it is, Allah, your creator will always leave you signs because the things that you're supposed to be doing in this lifetime are, once you're aligned to them, they also want you to, there's a quote, what you want also wants you. So it's like God will 
will give you a sign so that you can take this step and take that next step and take that next step and then also realize that you're not alone eh? you know in this life we get scared and it's also another tip of mine like we get scared of doing things differently getting out of our comfort zones but in reality that fear is just in our minds you know so the other tip i was going to tell you is that take an emotional risk as often as you can like just take the risk because you're not alone you're you're here to experience the fullness of life everything that life has in store for you so this fear that we usually have when let's say public speaking when you're going in front of a stage and you have this crippling fear as if people in the audience are going to take out machine guns and shoot you like it's not going to happen it's in the mind it's emotional it stems from maybe times when you felt embarrassed and you think that this is one of those situations where you feel embarrassed and you'll just want the ground to open up and you'll just want to die yeah it's not that serious and you'll find there's a lot of reward in doing those things taking those emotional risks because it's what also helps you grow just know that there will be signs breadcrumbs along the way that will show you whether you're on the right path or not if you notice that not only are you not getting any signs and things are like really difficult and there's a lot of friction towards a direction that you're going stop and ask yourself is that really where i'm supposed to be going why is there so much friction maybe the friction is so that you can go over the hurdle but then there'll be a sign and things will be made easy to support that decision maybe the friction is because it's saving you from making a huge mistake or going in the wrong direction partnering with the wrong people marrying the wrong person being in the wrong relationship eating the wrong food <laughs> you know so look for these signs look for the points of least resistance like a river you know when a river flows a river doesn't make effort when it's flowing it flows where there's least resistance but look at how powerful a river is look at how powerful water is yet it doesn't struggle it doesn't try to force its way it literally just flows and its power is able to get to where it needs to go and remove any blockages along the way and another thing is avoid lying i won't say stop lying altogether i also lie i i lied the other day that when somebody called me and i didn't pick up their call and i called them back the next day i lied that i was busy i actually wasn't i just didn't want to talk to the person i was in the headspace and i i say avoid lying because there are times when you don't really need to lie there are times when you can dodge the question or find a different way of answering or be as close to the truth but if you can't just avoid lying because lying makes you weak and you you know your own lies actually you're the only person who knows all the lies that you've ever told and your body knows that it's a lie your conscience your subconscious knows that it's a lie so when you continue lying you're weakening your subconscious and it goes with your confidence so you start to notice that you're less and less con- confident and the number one hack for confidence is to keep promises to yourself and to not lie and people who are more confident and i'm not talking about that pretend confident arrogance and whatever i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the people who you know when they walk into a room are intrinsically confident they just walk in and they command this power they don't even have to say anything they just just by being there their presence you can feel their confidence those guys do not lie to themselves and they avoid lying to other people so avoid lying both to yourself and to other people especially for other people like no one's worth you experiencing hell because of them because you had to lie to them and as i said i'm not perfect in this area i'm still working on these things but i really avoid telling lies like i really like if you really corner me and 
you ask me and especially when I've decided I'm not lying in this situation, I'll just tell you, I'm not going to answer that or I'd rather not answer that. Or do you really want the truth? And then I'll tell you the truth and you'll not really want to hear it. So I, I really like, I don't even like it. In fact, every time it just makes me cringe at the thought of me voicing uh, something that's, that's a lie. So yeah, avoid lying. <laughs> Yeah, let's actually hold each other accountable. Let's do that. Let's say that going forward for me this year onwards, if I was lying 10%, 20%, let me be honest, if I was lying 20% of the time, I'm going to reduce that by half to 10%. Will you join me? <laughs> let me know below. Let me know what percentage you think you lie and then what you can reduce it to by your birthday or by the next year or in the next one year when I'm making this video and yeah we're talking about that cool cool another thing is be kind to yourself and others it's easier sometimes to be kind to other people but it's not so easy to be kind to ourselves and a lot of the times people talk really badly to themselves it's something that I, I became very conscious about and I can say I don't really talk like if I do talk badly to myself it's a very short period and it's short-lived but I work on making sure that I'm aware when I get the negative self-talk like let's say when I'm comparing myself to other people I very quickly become aware of what I'm doing and I very quickly like tell myself that's not true that's negative self-talk. I don't know where that is coming from. So be kind to yourself. Be kind to how you talk to yourself. Be kind and patient to how much work you've put in and the results that you've gotten or the lack thereof. Just be kind. Be as kind to yourself as you would to a child who you found on the street crying. Like, sometimes that's really who we are. We, we're like us little child who's crying and needs attention and we don't usually give them attention we kick them around and then we have this idea that the more mean you are to yourself the more ambitious you'll be the more successful you'll be because you're always kicking yourself and you read about these high achievers who talk about how you know like they have they have this person in their head that's always like kicking them and telling them they're not good enough and that's how they became a billionaire and stuff like that but look at those people they're not happy like if you had this person who's telling you up until you reach a billion that you're worthless or that you're not worth much or that you're a failure until that point no matter how much effort you've put in no matter how far you've come if you've got that person in your mind do you think they go away when you get to a billion? No. Now they'll be like a trillion. And you're a failure until then. Which means you don't even get to enjoy whatever it is that you've been able to achieve. That you came from poverty and you got to become a millionaire or billionaire. And you can't even celebrate that. Because as soon as you get there, that voice is like, hmm. And you think you're all that. You haven't even achieved as much as so and so. It goes back to you comparing yourself. So yeah, these tips generally are interconnected. That's how you're seeing a moving from one to, a, to the other. They really are connected. But be kind to yourself. And in line with that, be very careful what you say about yourself. I am is a very powerful word. I know you know this and you've heard about this, right? Anything that you say after I am, whether it's I am late, I am strong, I am that, that's just how I am. Anything that you attach to your I am becomes your identity and you start to fight for it. So if you have a weakness, the worst thing that you can do is add I am before stating that weakness. I don't even like to say it because I don't want to, be, to weaken myself. And there was a study that was done where there was a psychology study where they painted the hallways. Hi, Ninja. They painted the hallways or wrote, they had these hallways that had like negative words 
along the hallway before you got to the room where we okay all right he wants us to go for a walk we'll go later um let me finish okay ninja so they had these like negative on both walls then you go to a room there and they pretended that they were testing you for something else which was not the truth the truth was they were actually testing whether this negative text along the walls would have any impact on you so some people they had negative some people they had positive and they realized that at the end of the hall where the room was where you showed up depending on whether it was negative or positive you'd show up differently so the people who there was negative text would be slouching by the time they got to the end of the hall would be weaker would not be able to think to solve simple mathematical questions that they would ask in the room the people who had the positive on the other hand would show up standing stronger they would be able to solve problems creatively they were more confident just by walking down a hallway with text that you're not even noticing you're oblivious to the fact that you that this text is there to test how you're going to show up at the end of the hall now imagine when you're doing it to yourself imagine every time you say these things and you're thinking it's not it doesn't make a difference but it's like a pot of water boiling you don't see the pot of water boiling until they steam or until it starts to boil but up until that point it doesn't mean the water is staying cold that water is heating up the temperature is rising but you only start to notice it when you see steam signs when the water starts to boil when you're boiling yourself like when things have gotten really thick and really bad is when you start to notice and by then you may not be able to associate it with what you've been telling yourself all the time so careful what you tell yourself careful what you add before i am it's really important i don't even allow my friends to call themselves names like how someone can say oh i'm so this maybe something has happened they've dropped something or whatever and then they and then they attach their identity and they say ah you know i'm usually like i'm always like uh uh-uh. uh like <laughs> i'll stop you and i've not been very popular for stopping someone because they're like no i'm just saying how things are i'm like don't call yourself things like that if somebody was calling you that i wouldn't appreciate it so i don't appreciate you calling yourself that and in line with that give yourself a compliment there's nothing wrong with complimenting yourself I know we are told that it's blowing our horn and we shouldn't do it and we are being arrogant and stuff like that but if you're if you're not appreciating yourself who's going to appreciate you and maybe other people are appreciating you but the one that will mean the most is the one that comes from you the truth that's the one that really builds your confidence even if people are applauding you it's you telling yourself that you've earned that applause that makes the difference not the applause otherwise you would be getting more confident as other people are being applauded so it's not the applause it's what you tell yourself the meaning you give to what has just happened people have congratulated you it's the meaning you give yourself some people are congratulated and they get and they feel uncomfortable so it's not about the compliment it's what you tell yourself it's the story you tell yourself about what has happened so give yourself that compliment tell yourself you're doing a good job well done Jackie you're making this video when ninja needs to go for a walk and he's been jumping up and down and you're steadfast like i'm going to finish this video before i take him so well done Jackie well done for putting out content all these years growing your facebook following growing your youtube following your instagram following like well done sometimes it's discouraging i put out content and there's no reaction it's crickets So it's not always going to work out but I tell myself well done for getting it done despite there not being the what you wanted to happen in the last one you still went out and you did the next one like well done so compliment yourself I think it's healthy for us to compliment ourselves in order for us to also be able to take in other people's compliments and give people heartfelt con- uh, compliments did i say confidence or compliments <laughs> compliments you compliment yourself in order for you to be better at complimenting others and better at taking in compliments when they actually come to you so 
give yourself a con compliment. <laughs> and another thing I learned is a boring life is actually a good life. I know on social media it seems like everyone is having more fun than you but let me tell you even that party that looks like really exciting if you look at it even in the movies there's always like lights flickering and all these things and filters to try and make it look like it's more fun than it is because no one's having that much fun but it's made to look like it's a lot of fun and that's why people drink so that they loosen up and they feel like they're having that much more fun but remember at the end of the day these are also just highlights like you're not partying 24 hours you're asleep boring you're having breakfast boring you're cooking boring you're washing dishes boring you're doing your laundry boring you're talking on the phone to a friend could be boring <laughs> like there are a lot of boring things that your day is made up of so when you compromise the boring for like what appears to be exciting like drama so that you can have like a more interesting life it's not worth it you know a boring life is a good life sometimes you could just be doing like right now let's say for me i'm recording this video then after this i'll go take ninja uh, for a walk then i'll come back i'll make something to eat maybe i'll watch something but if you look at my my day away from the highlights it might appear that it's boring but it's actually very fulfilling for me and i'm enjoying myself i could be doing something as simple as just lying on the grass and watching the clouds or watching the stars and it appears boring but for me it's interesting i mean i i love it i love seeing the clouds changing or at night i love trying to figure out where is libra where is venus which is orion's belt where are the three sisters like all these really interesting things and the sky has a lot of fascinating things and there's even an app that you can use that will tell you where different things are like there's excitement in that but somebody looking at it from the outside expecting that life is supposed to be like the kardashians drama all the time might call your life boring and you too might look at your life and think yeah my life is so boring i don't really do anything interesting and as long as you're taking those emotional risks you're doing things differently you're doing things that challenge you you're taking different routes you're exploring different things you're talking to strangers you're going to for lunch or breakfast or drinks at a place that you've never been and you're making conversations with the guy at the bar who you didn't know before like as long as you're doing those different things every so often then a boring life is actually a good life like it's actually totally cool don't exchange this for drama or trying to be like dramatize your life or trying to exaggerate your life no if you have those kind of friends who need you to be like oh you know last weekend we went out and we did this and we you know like your life has to be so fast paced and full of so much thrill to the point where you you have to lie don't lie to make it sound more interesting than it actually is you know if if those are your friends you need to also consider because that means you can't be your authentic self around them so they get a part of you that is not really the real you so yeah so a boring life is a cool life oh and i have one last one do something childish <laughs> do something childish today like there are sometimes i do the most childish things i'm driving down a highway i lower my window and i start saying hi to people as i'm driving by like pedestrians or cyclists and i'm like hey nice <laughs> you know like i do really childish things but i honestly think that it's one of the things that makes me that keeps me happy because i don't take myself too seriously and honestly i feel like such a child like even now with my birthday and don't ask my age <laughs> now with my birthday and any birthday like i've always wondered like who, who is that like I, I don't recognize those numbers because I feel like such a child and I behave like such a child. My friends know this and I, I make no apologies, by the way. I really am a child. So do something childish. And if you have a child, go do it with them. Like if you have kids around you and you have the opportunity to do it with kids, like go do it with them because it's double the fun. But do your childish thing and i'm going to go do my childish thing <laughs> so stay tuned as you see what exactly i'm going to do oh my gosh <laughs>
put myself under pressure to do something childish. Ah. Thank you for being here and watching my stupidity. <laughs>